morning. I feel feeling really inspired by everyone's presentations. It's been so, so interesting. Um, so we've been asked to very quickly present a, a taste of the research project that we're working on. Feeling very fortunate to have Emma, Carrie and Amel here who are part of the team and I'm hoping I do justice to, uh, to presenting our work. So thank you. Hoping this moves forward. So just a very, very brief overview of, of the study that we are doing. Um, I've heard colleagues talk this morning about working over a, a long period of time. We kind of had the opposite challenge in the fact that our, our project was funded for seven months. Um, this is a national uh, project funded by the NIHR. And so we had seven months from the beginning of the funding to, to writing the final report that we're kind of in the midst of now. Um, so a very kind of quick project, um, but we have tried to engage in a meaningful way with children and young people. We're very lucky to come from a range of um, different backgrounds. So Emma is educational psychology. Uh, I'm a children's nurse um, by background and Mel um, comes from the world of, of law. And we've got amazing Carrie from uh, Liverpool Health Partners, who's been uh, great at, at coordinating our work. So the first phase of the study that we completed was really to look at what's been done there already. So our project was focused on how has the COVID uh, project impacted on children and young people with special educational needs and disabilities. And I know, um, I think there was um, a, a colleague on the on the meeting this morning who's doing some similar work um, and really very focused on solution focused and moving forward and what children and young people could tell us about what mattered now. So knowing that for some children and young people, this had been a really tough time for them, um, but also that there have been some positive things. So we were really keen to work with children and young people to see what, what should we be doing now. So we completed a rapid, rapid scoping review of the current literature and the evidence. We were keen not to reinvent some uh, the studies that had already taken place. There's been some amazing work out there. Um, and we have published that um, scoping review that's on the website that's at the end of the slides. Our phase two project involved Oh. Is it, the slide hasn't moved on. Oh, I'm still on this. I'm still on different phases of the study. That we've still got the very first slide. Oh, I'm looking at the second slide. Oh, maybe. Oh, let me try again. There we are. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you. Is that on it now? To make more sense for the slide. Apologise for that. Um, so the, the phase one was the rapid scoping review. Phase two, which we have completed, um, used a, a short structured online survey with children, young people with special educational needs and disabilities. And we always knew that this may not be our preferred way of reaching out to these children, young people, but also recognising that many children, young people uh, would feel able to respond in this way. And we used a really short survey um, designed with children and young people, which used um, emojis. They could attach drawings. Um, could type short sections of text. The survey also went out to parents and carers, um, educational professionals, health and social care professionals, and also local authority staff. And this was really just to gain a, a, a really quick look at what, what the impact of the COVID pandemic had been um, on these children and their families and those professionals that were caring for them. We then also conducted some semi-structured interview with children and young people, um, parents, again, the professionals that were working with them. And that was really enlightening. Um, we drowning slightly in data because um, we had so many people uh, that wanted to share their views with us. Um, and then this enabled us then to, to look at all the information that the families had told us and then to start to try and pull that together. And we're now in the process of conducting um, some collaborative uh, priority setting workshops with children and young people and their parents and also key stakeholders. And that's what I'm just going to focus on very briefly this morning. Can you see the next slide now? Fabulous. OK, so before we launched and started to conduct these workshops, uh, we were really keen to make sure that we were um, using the best methods that we could to engage with children, and young people. Um, and we had the opportunity to um, work with some young people at the Hive, which is um, across on the Wirral, which is a, a wonderful place. And so we worked with the children, and young people to help us think about how should we conduct these workshops? What's the best way um, to make sure that children, and young people with such a range of abilities um, and, and challenges could, could engage with us and share their views and opinions. So the children, and young people advisors told us that flexibility was key. So we didn't just want to use one method. We were really, really keen to use a range of methods which really foregrounded children's abilities to share their views in whatever way worked for them. All the children, and young people that we spoke to were a bit fed up of online engagement, Zooms and Teams 
felt a bit saturated with that method and they were really keen that we should engage in a face-to-face -face way with children and young people and that enabled us to to judge more in the moment how those children and young people wanted to engage and that could be through writing or drawing or talking or using any augmented communication that the young people may. Um, the young people were very keen that we didn't run a workshop that involved them sitting and talking or us talking at them. They wanted some activities where they could move and work in different ways and um, they didn't want to listen to us talking too much. They wanted to be able to get stuck straight into things. They wanted to be able to come into a room um, and engage. And, and one of the workshops that we've held, it was really nice to hear from the, the head teacher of the school that as the young people who'd been a little bit nervous about taking part, when they entered the room and saw all the activities and the pieces of paper and things on the floor and things on the table, they felt less anxious and were really keen to come and join in. So it, it, was, it was really good advice from these children and young people. The children and young people said that by moving, they could move around what the young people called stations. So we set up stations using different methods around the room that the children could walk around at their own pace um, within accessible um, rooms so that so that we made sure that all children and young people could join in. We also could act as scribe for the children and young people who might not want to write um, or may have um, difficulties with, with wanting to write down or draw their own views. The children, young people, and I think it was Rachel that was saying earlier this morning, the children didn't want to be invited to an extra thing to come to. They felt really busy um, and pressured, so they wanted us to come to them. And so as previous um, presenters have been talking about this morning, we, we, went, we are in the process of going to children's schools, children's kind of activity groups where they are already so that it's not an extra burden in busy children's lives. So we adopted some um, methods where we asked them um, to do thumbs up and thumbs down, good things, difficult things about the pandemic. We were we were quite um, look we were quite keen on focusing on things that had worked well as well as those things that have maybe been more challenging for children and people. Um, we also used a one of our child advisors thought that it might be quite nice to write a letter to the prime minister. Um, so we encourage the children and young people to say, if you were writing to who's in charge of the country, what would you tell them about what was important to you and, and what needs to change now? What, what could help make you make your life easier or make your life better? We um, also have a huge kind of wall or floor, floor sheet to look at priorities. Um, and what that looks like for that child and that young person and their life and, and, and what actually would bring meaning to them. And so we've been working at different levels, um, kind of speaking to the converted because listening to the presentations this morning, everyone's using really lovely creative methods. But I think having activities on the floor and tables meant that it felt quite um, unstructured and um, enabled us to engage really nicely with children and young people. So working flexibly was really, really important. We talked about working creatively using kind of creative methods, but working flexibly, flexibly has been really important. The nature of the project within its seven month time frame was to identify um, core priorities for children and young people um, with special educational needs and disabilities as we come out of COVID, although it's taking much longer, I think, than most of us ever thought it would. Um, and so we have faced quite a few challenges in, in doing that, in the fact that for these children and young people, the systems that they were within and their lives were often really, really challenged before COVID. And so we've really struggled to sometimes differentiate what has been worse or better or particularly challenging because of COVID or what was already really hard and, um, and these children and young people trying to work within a system that has been described as already broken became a real challenge. And so by working with children and young people um, and, and people working on the front line with, with these children and young people, they came up with the idea of this um, COVID magnifier, whereas actually there were lots and lots of pre-existing challenges, but it had just been magnified in, in some cases by, by COVID and, and associated changes in these children and young people's lives. Originally, our intention was to do ranking exercises with children and young people and identify a really uh, short list of priorities. Um, and I think it's one of the hardest things that we found. was really interested to listen to the presentation this morning about the, the badges and choosing priorities for what the, what the city focuses on. 
And I think certainly children, young people would find it very, very hard to choose that school was wasn't important and shouldn't be in that that list. And so we haven't been able to narrow our list down maybe as much as we'd hoped because the children and people were telling us that it all, all of these things really, really matter to, to them. Um, and so trying to trying to find a short list of priorities for children and young people when we have a large range of ages of special educational needs and disabilities, um, abilities, needs, ages, circumstances, preferences um, is is an amazing challenge to be to be faced with. Um, but certainly we would be struggling more than we are now if we didn't have the insights from children, young people who have, have challenged us to kind of think, think wide and make sure that it really, really applies to them. So we are in the process at the moment of trying to work out these priorities and things that, that matter most to children, young people and that are most important to them. Um, and it has been um, made a far more meaningful process by engaging directly with children, young people and those people working um, on the front lines. Um, so yes, very, very brief, I'm making up time for you, Carol. Um, but thank you, and, and Emma and Amel and Carrie are here to answer um, any questions along with myself, if there are any in the discussion. <laughs>